Just about, and I want to pray real quick again. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we go to your direction, not ours, Lord, and that, Lord, that you reveal to each man here what you have for them, Lord. Make it personal and intimate for them, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for even having the opportunity to open up the word, Lord, as it is written down, Lord. We praise you, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. Give us ears to hear, and eyes to see into it. But most important, prepare our hearts to receive it, so it's not just words, Lord, but it's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, last week we, we talked about the two seals of blood that you wouldn't know unless you looked into the original language that they were talking about two fields. I handed out a, a uh, handout to, so that you could go back over it and check it for yourself to see if it's what it is really saying. Because it has all the references and stuff to it. Okay? We, we ended after that last week, but there was one thing we did not talk about, and that was iniquity, because we were talking about the wages of iniquity, or what we were saying was the wages of unrighteousness, okay? But the Hebrews actually, as today, believed there were three different uh, aspects to sin, okay? And that was found in... Uh, Let's go ahead. Did anyone bring their handouts that I sent, sent to them on iniquity last week? Mm -hmm. Wrong what I'm going to have you do is actually one? read right off of this right. To, right. to help clarify some of the things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay? And of course, the others that were here have this copy already with them at home. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to get into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do is borrow some people to to read because there, there's going to be a little bit of understanding to go along with it first. So does anyone want to volunteer to read the first part on iniquity? This is going to describe three different areas of sin that God is saying. So, dealing with. I don't have one, so if anybody jumps, uh, he'd yeah. be happy to run. Anyone that has a sure. copy that volunteers. Sure. What do you want me to read? Right off the, Which one? Iniquity? Iniquity. The, fir the first uh, paragraph? Well, it goes down about middle page. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? You're good, man. You're good. <laughs> me, can I do it in Spanish? Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord. Iniquity in the Hebrew is avon. It means to bend, twist, distort. So iniquities are a blending, twisting, or distorting of the law or God's word to different degrees worthy of punishment. As we shall read later, iniquity is certainly a violation of the right or the duty that mankind is under obligation to do. As such, and iniquity can also be a wicked act and immoral conduct or practices that are harmful or offensive to society, but especially to God. Exodus 34, 17 mentioned iniquities and guilt in the same sentence as God says he is forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sins. Stop. Good, good place. That's the three the three areas that, that, that deal with sin. Iniquity, transgression, and the word sin itself. And that's what we're going to look at real quick. The three three of them and what the difference is so you have an understanding. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Even words, uh, right. even, even adding transgression, which will be discussed in the later, God sometimes used the word like iniquity, transgression, transgression and sin and, trans, and trespasses to indicate that the varying degree of this disobedience, especially in the context within which this word is found. Iniquity means guilt that is worthy of punishment. 
due to the blending or the twisting of the law of God, which sin is the transgression of the law. When David lusted after Bathsheba and didn't repent, his iniquity increased because the sin he committed was adultery with her. Even worse, in his continually living in, in higher, and especially after he conspired to have Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, murdered, then he was fi uh, finally, then he was finally, was murdered. The degree, the degree of his disobedience grew, and grew as David continued committing greater and greater iniquity. So iniquity, so in, iniquity refer to a willful knowing transgression of God's law, where one desire starts to I acknowledge. Uh, legislate my sin. I uh, legislate my sin. Sin defined. First John 3 4. Give perhaps the best definition of sin. Okay, that's it. Oh, there. Oh. That's the end of it. That's it? Yes. The sin is the uh, next one. I like reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what you what you want to see here is the bending, it's the word with bending, a bending and twisting of the law or the scripture and such. How do you, how do, practically, how do we do that? Well, you know, we, we, we look at adultery, and Jesus used that as an example, as is a, is a terrible thing to do physically. But it began with the thought, okay? The thought, where the thoughts come in is where the iniquity comes in. What you do with that thought, whether you bend it in your own mind to justify you having these uh, immoral thoughts towards the young lady, or whether you, you you say that's you know it's wrong that's iniquity. I'll uh, stick with what Scripture says about uh, lust and, and such. You know, but we tend to try to justify our sins or find an excuse for it. And what happens is we do it a little bit at first, and then it evolves, and we, we add a little bit of extra into it. You know, okay, well I'll watch this on TV. You know, <laughs> and then it becomes to the point that now we're on the computer, you know, and we're starting to look at images of women and whatever. Then it evolves a little bit further, and then we start actually getting into the pornography and stuff. You see, that's that's iniquity because it's a breaking of the law, in almost like in stages, getting worse and worse and worse and worse like David did with Bathsheba by going out and seeing her and then instead of stopping at that point turning the other the way he began to continually gaze on it and the next thing you know, you know he's got her coming to him and then the next thing he's having her husband killed you see the, the, the iniquity part is the part that it's a bending and twisting well I'm the king I have the right for so many wives or whatever it, you know we justify what we do. You know, that, that was an, uh, an example in the scripture of iniquity. Okay? So does everyone have pretty good understanding now what iniquity is? Okay? It's a form of sin, but it's not full-blown sin yet. It's heading that direction. And if you notice uh, it, it with, with hate and murder, Jesus does the same thing. They call it, uh, the, the rabbis would call it uh, creating a fence. You put something ahead of it to keep you from coming to the uh, full realization. Because how many people know that, you know, a lot, the number one excuse is, well, the devil made me do it, or it just happened out of the blue right then and there. And I didn't have a chance. It overwhelmed me before I even knew it. Well, that's because you didn't see the warning signs before. You didn't see the iniquity that was leading up to that. You know, if, if you have heavy problem with pornography, you need to look back and see, well, are you feeding that through images on television, watching shows that you shouldn't really be watching? You see, the fence would be the shows on TV so that when you recognize that, hey, I'm heading down this path, you can make that choice to repent at that moment and turn to God. Okay, but what happens is the further you fall into sin, the further away from God you fall. You know, your relationship is broken. 
<laughs> so it, it, it always involves a broken relationship with God. Right? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. That is another scripture. Building on it spreads. Something that's hard. Right. Yeah. That's that's the importance of again of fellowship, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, David, because of his uh, the authority that he had as king, all of a sudden got to his head because God gave him the position of king. But then, the more uh, then all of a sudden got to his head that rather than going out and being with his uh, soldiers and, and, and as they do, as the scripture says. He decided, well, I, I earned the right to be home. And since I earned the right to be home because I'm this and I'm that, then I'm going to stay home. But the minute that we pull ourselves away from the body, right. I, I, consider, I consider where he should have been was with the church, with his people. But when we look at it, when we pull away from the church, when we pull away from fellowship uh, in relational aspect, then we're opening our doors to uh, watching those videos or, or, or these uh, other things. You know, uh, we should be, uh, you know, constantly growing. But, you know, there's people that are still in the same level because they haven't grown into the Word, haven't read the Word, studied the Word. I see, I see the difference even in myself that when I'm around uh, a man of God, uh, I, you know, I stand up a little better, I talk a little better, I say, oops, ironically. <laughs> be, but because of the relational aspect that we are, are in. But when we pull away, uh, and I'm, I'm doing my own thing, I'm doing this and all that, then, you know, uh, self becomes evident in the way we act, the way we talk, the way we look at things, you know. And uh, that's why we have to keep our minds uh, on, on things of God, you know. That's why it's important for us for even the, like this fellowship here, the relationships that we build, uh, and that and seeing that's one of the issues that uh, uh, what's that guy's name you're talking about? <laughs> no, not David. We're talking about uh, uh, Judas, because Judas instead of being, you know, even though he was with them. Right. He wasn't with them. <laughs> so that's a good point, though. I just thought about that. And I know, go ahead, brother. But but I just thought about that. You can be with somebody but not be there. Right. Yeah. You can be in church but not be in church. Yeah. You can be in fellowship but not be in fellowship. I, I li I, I'm just going to shut up. Uh, uh, I'm like, man, I got to learn to shut up. <laughs> no. Man, I, and I didn't mean that that way. I apologize. I didn't mean it that way. I'll take way. that bet, though. <laughs> <laughs> No, and what I, well, you know, and, and what, what I was saying is that that I, I was listening to something this morning, and it was like a devotional that I listened to. You know how many times I had to go back and, and start over? About three or four times, because as soon as I started listening to it, my mind goes somewhere else. So I had to go. I listened to it three or four times so I could get the gist of it because it was so important to me but I kept and I started listening to it all, you know so I shut up you know Isaiah explained that the, his definition that many many centuries ago he said like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and that's what happens like you're saying Amen. go your own way this yeah. gentleman wanted to say something no, he, I think he was, no, he was getting his food. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> you, you want me to pick up with sin defined? The in next moment. paragraph? Yeah, in one moment, though. You know, you brought that up. No man is an island to himself. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and, no. and I don't know if that's scripture. I didn't look that up. But there are scriptures that talks about uh, isolating yourself. And when you, when you do that, you wander. Eventually, you wander off on a tangent. You know, it's one of the reasons why we don't do Lone Ranger Christianity, because each man has his own desires, and we have an evil inclination, and then we have another inclination towards God when you become born again, because you get that, that the Spirit of God placed in you. 
Okay? You make that decision in which inclination you're going to go to. Because the Holy Spirit's going to put the light on it and make you make a choice. You see? And, and, and that's what Romans is all about when he says, I know to do good and I don't do good, and, and on and on. There's, there's a war going on on the inside. You're, you're to uh, make that choice. And, and the earlier you, you see it coming, the easier it is to make the choice. And the Holy Spirit will take the area and illuminate it and show you what area is causing you to stumble. Because you see... Every man here <coughs> sins, okay, because we're all sinners. We fall short of the, of the glory of God, okay? But we're not lawless sin, uh, sinners, ones that practice it on a continual basis, okay? And, and that's the big difference. That's uh, what the next paragraph goes into. Okay, go ahead and... <laughs> Sin defined. First John three verse four is perhaps the best definition of sin that there is in the Bible, and it says everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. So sin is a transgression of the law of God. Every iniquity is sin, but some sins are not worthy of punishment as others. For example, in the Old Testament, adultery and murder could bring the death penalty while stealing, having a lower degree of guilt worthy of not a severe punishment, was still sin. Nevertheless, David wrote, Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. That's Psalm 51, verse 4. But he had yet to commit iniquities at birth. Sin, gotcha. Means sinning, missing the mark. It's like shooting an arrow at a target, and you not only miss the bullseye, you miss the target altogether. Your arrow falls far short, just as we all fall short of the glory of God. Okay. So, now you know the difference between sin and iniquity. Okay? We're going to be bringing in transgression on top of this, which is the, the, the third aspect of it. So, another person want to go ahead and read that one? Who else has a sheet? All right. And uh, Psalm 23 5 mentions sin. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. A transgression and iniquity is in all in the same verse as it says, I acknowledge my sin to you. I did not cover my iniquities. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquities of sin by the altar separating transgressions, iniquities, and sin. He seems to indicate that they are all different things, but one thing is certain. All transgression, all transgression is sin. It is sin. And all iniquities are sin. Make no mistake about it. Transgression is sin. It is, and you can't... You skip the, you oh, skip and you... Uh, and like and has sin of like a like transgression God's law which makes it a sin if your neighbor is, has a, a sign up and you can't legally trespass his property but then you go over his fence you are transgressing the no trespassing law and that is sin because you are transgressing the law by your trespassing transgression be shot it is willful act of disobedience. It is a transgression done specifically to spite God, sin, iniquity, and transgression. Let's return again to Psalm 32 5 to make clear the distinction between sin, iniquity, and transgression. David said he will confess, means agree with, his transgression, his willful act of disobedience to the Lord 
and God will forgive the iniquity, his bending, twisting, and distorting of the law that grew in the degree of worthy of greater punishment of his sin. The transgression of God's law, all of these are sin. All are just being more specific to the degree of sin, to the degree of the act of the will, and to the degree of breaking God's law. Conclusion. Oh, yeah. finish conclusion? Yeah, because yeah, there's only this and a little bit on the next one. There are differences between sin and iniquity, both, uh, but both requires a cleansing, and that cleansing must come from the blood of the Lamb of God. But well, here's a show that was accomplished for sure. Since, therefore, we have not, not been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. And it was for... It was for the, uh, uh, the sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him would might, we might become the righteousness of God that takes away all the transgressions, all trespasses, and all the iniquities, yes, all of our sins. Amen. Amen. I, I think it's important to understand definitions because we gloss over things when we read, you know. Well, we, we looked at the, the wages of sin, the iniquity, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, what we were looking at Acts chapter 1, uh, the, the, the wages of iniquity or unrighteousness. Because that's basically what iniquity is, it's unrighteousness, right? It's, it's twisting and distorting that which is righteous, which is the word of God. Okay? Or... Okay, so now we know the three different, and, and I encourage you to go look these scripture verses up to, in the actual scripture itself to make sure that's what it's saying. Okay, uh, to understand the original Hebrew language in it and stuff, it, a simple Strong's concordance will bring out the Hebrew word and the definition of the Hebrew word. You know, based on what you uh, said, uh, uh, when you look at the uh, Judas, you know, so many times you, you read a scripture and, you know, okay, Judas betrayed, uh, you know, Jesus and all that. But when you start really looking at the character of the man that betrayed Jesus, his character and who he was and what he did, uh, <coughs> did prior to that. You know, because uh, uh, you have to look at that character. And, you know, what possessed uh, uh, a Judas to do what he did? But when you look back at his character, then you start to have a better understanding that iniquity or the, or the sin that was inside of him that eventually led to the point that he was used uh, 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 by Satan uh, uh, to uh, betray Jesus. So, you know, it, it's important for us to understand that character because, uh, you know, uh, out of his, uh, he was born and he was, and his family was part of the Sanhedrin. But he had a bad attitude all the way through. This dude knew the word, he knew all that, but he had a bad attitude. I mean, the dude used, uh, used the church's money to uh, you know, to fund some of his uh, his his things, you know, uh, his purposes, you know, and so here is a man that at uh, first he's got a uh, bad attitude, uh, you know, uh, argumentative and all that, had issues with the, some of the apostles, you know, because of his attitude and stuff. But then you go and you, so, and then he was a thief, which he already took money from there to buy his uh, his uh, his old Lexus or. Big old Cadillac or something like that, you know. So he got a, you know. So he used that resources. So he was a character of that person that betrayed him. So there was, you know, even though God, uh, uh, God chose him, you know, and and he knew the word, but the word was not in him. You know, you could be, you, know, you could be with Christ, walk, see all the miracles, see all these wonderful healings. And, and, and water it to wine and, and uh, you know, and all these great and wonderful things, but yet not make a difference in a person's walk. You know, what uh, the scripture says, uh, show me 
find, oh, we need to see these miracle signs and wonders. He said, man, all you need is what I gave you right here. Because they saw the signs and wonders back in the day, but they didn't do nothing about it. They didn't change. They continue. So, you know, it has to be an inner relationship that you have to have with your right. Well, I have a question within this, what being said. We're speaking of iniquity. If we have to, he was talking about a Judas. Okay, iniquity is, is that our father was passed on down, right? Am I right? It's the sin that's passed down. But Judas, at this point, has been walking with Jesus. And as you read on in that scripture, it's going to tell you that he allowed Satan to enter in. So this is the choice what he made right here. He entered in right here, but the iniquity was passed down. But let us share with the word in us if we allow a place so Satan can come in there and do it. And that's where the sin is taking place, not for what's happening right now. But that's what I want to see. The iniquity is passed down. Our fathers. It's passed, it's passed on to, to us, but the word of Jesus, the word has come. And this is what's going to make us free from that. But Judas, it says, and Satan entered him. Right. Yeah. And then it was dark. Yeah. It went out, and yeah. it was dark. Yeah. That's, I'm why up in. that's why we're told to break the curse yeah. of the fathers. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, up to that point, when they were sitting at, uh, around the table, up to that point, he still had an opportunity to back out. Right? Yes. Right. Right. Had, yeah, he had, a, he had a, a opportunity, but until that point. Like, like we, we talked about last week in, in that discussion, and here iniquity is something that's it, it's a continuing thing, and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper until you hit that point of no return, which is what you're talking about when Satan enters in. Okay. Now, where that line is, we can't draw a judgment to where that line is. God Himself makes that decision. You know, when He's dealt with you and dealt with you and dealt with you, and you've refused it, refused it, refused it. And there comes a point in time when he just oh, <coughs> lets go and says, okay, have your way. Go ahead. No. <laughs> but, no, go ahead. But, but, God, but God knew the characteristics of Judas and yeah. knew what the outcome would be and that, that was needed to fulfill the prophecy. So here's, here's the question. How, how is that applicable in our lives today? How is that applicable? Like I just said, we have to break the curse of our fathers by turning to Jesus and turning right. away. Uh, okay, so and that's good. I, I like that. But the appli application for me, what I'm looking at is the fact that this guy, you know, look, look, I'm saying, oh, if you, you know, if you continue going down that road, man, just don't do that. Don't go over there and do it. Don't go see that girl over there, man. I know she's fine, brother. Uh, just don't go over there, you know what I'm saying? Don't pick on my brother and see. <laughs> no, 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 I got your back, I got your back. No, don't do it, man. Okay, but see, now, now, this is, this is the line what we were speaking of. See, we've gone from iniquity, now this is my sin now because the choice has been made. You see what I'm saying? The choice now is it's my the sin is not me. It's on me now. We stepped out of our fathers and now Jesus has come. You so, see? So, but here, here, the word is here. But you Sam, you're right. Yeah. We do we do watch out for each other, but we have to learn to do it in love and not of condemnation. Course. And that's it, but you and, know, you know I, yeah. you love me, I love you, brother, but don't do it, man. I said, you know what you don't lose your <laughs> you don't lose all that. But 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 yet but yet uh, then all of a sudden Satan came in. He said, I don't care how much you talk to him, I don't care how many scriptures you have, you don't care nothing because Satan already into him is already in his heart to go over there and get that sweet thing to sit over there. We go along and pull you, brother. <laughs> Get down, you old Pharisee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is important to understand here is there's a broken relationship. Amen. Judas 
has a broken relationship with Jesus himself. Amen. You know, we looked at it last week when 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 uh, he asked who, or when they asked who would betray Christ, he looks. It, uh, Judas says, "Why to Christ? Is it I?" <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, no, yeah, look in the mirror. Look right in the mirror. Right. 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 Yes, it is. Yeah, he chose to go ahead and betray him anyway. Right? Yeah. You, you know. And so what happens is the broken relationship of, with who God is. Did he really believe that Jesus was God? You know. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm did, disagreeing with what did you said. He, did he believe that Jesus was going to be the political savior of Israel? What's the right. time? Yeah. Which and is, see, which is but she preached on why Jesus did what he did because Jews thought that Jesus would bring down angels and they'd clear out that's, the... That's a great point. That's right. that's what, that was the mindset. That was the mindset of the people then. Yeah. They didn't have the direction of yeah. the Holy Spirit on a constant yeah. basis. Right. Right, and, the Holy Spirit and, and you know, you. Another, the Holy Spirit another thing that has, has yeah. intrigued me. But he, he, here's the thing on leadership, though. Listen to this. Now, Jesus is a leader, right? Now, I'm going to you, know, Jesus knows all things, but he chooses to know things if he needs to. But at this point in time, he sees his treasure. He knows his treasure is messed up. It's already been written in the Word. He already knows his treasure been messing up. But he gave him an opportunity. You know, you, uh, as a leader, sometimes you know your people and your, your uh, whoever you're influenced in or the leadership position that you know you give them a break, you give them a, a chance. But uh, until what? Until Satan enters the term, you know, you do it, don't do it, man. And you keep encouraging them. I just saw you at the bar the other day, man. What's up with that? You know, people. Are, so uh, you, it's getting back. And so the reputation of that man is going down. And can you imagine what the reputation of Jesus? Uh, well, he was he, he he was sinners, right? And, and thieves, you know, and all that. And Judas was there right in the midst of it, you know. Yep. And so you know, at, so that then at that point right there is me. You know, as a leader, he was giving him an opportunity to change his way. I, I guarantee you, he probably talked to him a little bit about hey, my buddy Judas. It would be so bad, you know. He did give him that last opportunity yeah. because when they said who, he said, he who takes the bread, and he dipped it and gave it to Judas, and Judas could have turned it down and said, no, yeah. not me. Yeah. That was his last yeah. chance right there. That's when Satan entered in. Yeah. And if you go through, I've, I've tried to find it, there's nowhere in the whole scriptures about Judas where he ever actually repented, spiritually repented. He was upset. He threw the silver back because he realized what he did. But he never turned back to God and asked for forgiveness. That's scary. <laughs> it, what's neat is when he did that. Yeah. That was a bitter. That's hurt. right. Right. You know. And what happens when you get called out on your sin? Ooh. You Dude, see. You get that bitter. You get bitter. Yeah. You, you see, and it really, it's an insight into to what was happening to mm -hmm. Judas that time. Yeah. yeah. You, you, here's something that. Judas, until that point when he came across, uh, to the Sanhedrin, when he took the money, I think it was that point where all of a sudden his, his eyes were open and he threw the money. He tried to rectify what he, 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 he sold him and sold him out. He tried to rectify that, but they told him, no, 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 forget it. That's and blood so, money. Yeah, so he took that money and just threw it. At yeah. that point in time, he realized where he made that mistake. That's why he went over and. But he was still trying to correct it in the worldly way, the, the worldly way they way. did. Right, right. He wasn't. He didn't do it the way Jesus would would do it. Right. So see, he got caught with the pan in the cookie jar. So, you, you know that that was what he was sorry about getting caught. Yeah. That was not God, not God, sorry. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> not a godly sorrow, which is right. repentance yeah. turned towards God. Instead, he turned in a different direction. Have a good day, brother. Yeah. That's a different How we going? All right, my friend. God bless you. Man. Worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. Yeah. That's right. There's a big difference. There's a huge difference. Wow. Wow. And there's a difference. The, way, the difference is, I'm sorry, Lord, that I, I did it, versus, I'm sorry, Lord, that they caught me doing it. Right. <laughs> exactly. God can't forgive that. 
I'm sorry I got caught. Yep. And you see that every day with the political climate when they get caught doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they change the words to justify. You know what just hit me, Sam? Yeah. Deflate gate. <laughs> But I want to encourage you, they've been taking it, okay? A lot of this discussion was also discussed last week along with other material, because this has been building on each other. So, so, if, weren't here, so if you weren't good. here on YouTube, you can pull up under God, what's it called? Coming God's Man? Coming God's Man. Uh, so, uh, That's cool. Yeah. My question is, is, is to the audience. Go ahead. Did we finish chapter one? I'm going to show it to my wife. Did we? No. We, no, we ain't finished chapter one. So then, then we stay tuned for the hey. remaining of chapter one. At, you made it, Sam. The, you made Sam, it Sam, the yeah. book of Acts doesn't finish until Jesus comes I back. I understand, but we thought about chapter one, man. There's a chapter two coming up. Well, we got oh, the millennium yet to go. <laughs>